Hello, I'm Pastor Jeremy Kopik, and this is the Bible Fellowship for Faith Baptist Church that we're posting for this weekend, July the 4th and 5th of 2020. If you want the notes from this conversation today, you can email me directly if you would like at pastorkopik at gmail.com. You can also get them regularly uploaded to you if you would like uh, at faithtitusville at gmail.com if you want to be on the regular mailing list. What if, what if no one cared for anyone other than themselves? What if no one cared or thought of anybody else? This is the basic question that's at the foundation of a conversation about respect. And my call to you today is that you would be respectful. Being respectful has to do with thinking of others. It literally means to think about other people, to think about the things that they are doing, to think about what they would want or what they would wish, to think about what is beneficial to them, to think about what you should or should not do in a right relationship with them. And so we naturally will go to a classic passage in the Word of God that we would typically call the Ten Commandments. In Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 through 17, you'll find what the Bible says here. This is one of the two passages where the Ten Commandments are recorded. The Ten Commandments are foundational for people who want to be respected by one another. If you want somebody else to think of you, you say, well, I wish you had thought of me. I wish you had called me before we talked about this. I wish you had said something to me. These are all conversations about respect, or these are all uh, principles that, that, that refer to the respect that you have for someone else. This is not necessarily about government, although it can apply to government, but it really just has to do with relationships and society, the relationships that we have with one another, the relationships that we have in a church, in a family, in a government, in a community, relationships that we have um, in, uh, across the board, uh, these, uh, we're, we're talking about respecting one another or thinking of one another. And so God has given us these 10 commandments. These 10 commandments, if you were going to dig in and spend a little more time with them, a couple of things that you will find. You'll find that the first four of them directly speak to your relationship with God. And the last six of them, your relationship with men or with people. And so, so even though when you get into the portion where you're talking about the last six, your relationship with people you'll find that these are based upon God's principles and God's designs. And so we'll talk about that in just a moment. But the bottom line is it all starts about, uh, out with commandment number one, where God says, I don't want you to have any gods before me. So we're in Exodus chapter 20 and verse three. This means that we should respect God who made us. We should not put anything in front of him. That's no material thing. That's no other God. God wants to be first in our lives. And he's the one that made us. He has every right to have designs upon our lives. Secondly, we should, respond, we should respect God's nature. And so he says, secondly, he says, don't make any graven images. This has to do, I think we naturally think of just with idols of some, some form. But the bottom line is this, God made all things. If you're going to make an idol, you're going to make it in the image of something, aren't you? You make it in the image of a, of, of a tree. If you want to worship a tree, you can make an idol in the image of a car. You can make an idol in the image of another person, a human being. You can bow down and worship a, a, a calf or an angel or a, a form of Buddha. But these are all idols. These are all forms. And for that matter, an image, you might imagine an image is what today we would look at as a photograph of some sort. It's not quite the same thing. But the point is that these are things that sometimes people will bow to these things as if these things are their gods. Well, God made these things. God's the one who made these things in the first place. And so why in the world would we think that God could be represented with one of these things? And if we wondered about it, God's been very clear here in Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 through 6. And that is, hey, don't make any graven images. Don't represent me with some material thing that I've made. We approach God not as a physical entity, but we approach God in prayer. Really, the second commandment is about prayer. God wants us to approach him and talk to him. He does not want us to talk to a stump. He doesn't want us to talk to an image, an idol, a statue. He doesn't want us to talk to those things. He wants us to talk to him. And this is about God's approachability. And as much as it might be a frustrating thing for us, because we think, I just wish I could see God right now. But the bottom line is God has said, this is how I want you to talk to me. Talk to me in prayer and don't make an image. Thirdly, God, we should be respectful of God's name. This has to do with God's agenda. This is not just about name dropping and saying, in Jesus' name, amen. 
although it includes that, it has to do with verifying that the words of my life and the actions of my life are in keeping with God's cause and God's agenda. So when we say his will be done or uh, do this in Jesus' name or do this with his name in mind, we're talking about respecting his cause. And so when we say his name, it's true, his name can be speaking, spoken in vain in that we, we are disrespectful or we use his name in a way that is not in keeping with his character. And so we say, yeah, God wanted me to do this. Well, if God didn't want you to do that, that's using his name in vain. For that matter, I suppose speeding down the interstate with your church bumper sticker is in a way also using God's name in vain because it, you're disrespecting the laws of the land and you're disres and yet at the same time, you're asso associating yourself with the name of God. And so it's important that you have respect for God's name. This is not just in your actions, but of course, in the actual things that you say. And if you say the name Jesus Christ, then you should speak respectfully of Jesus Christ. The last thing that you should do would be to associate the name of Jesus with a curse word or something like that, which clearly in our world today, these things are done continuously and all around us. Christian people, those who are followers of Jesus Christ, should have nothing to do with those things. We should have nothing to do with profanity that specifically speaks of the name of Jesus or disrespects the name of God. Number four, we should respect the fact that God calls us to a day of rest, a day of remembrance, and a day of reflection. This day is a gift from God. It should not be squandered. This is a day of rest. And we get it that in Old Testament times that they, they uh, rested on the seventh day. This is in keeping with what God did in Genesis. And by the way, do you think that God was tired after creating all things? If he wasn't tired after day one, I don't know what would make you think he was tired after day six. The fact is this, God did this not for himself, but for us, God rested on the seventh day. It was God's gift to us. It was God's blessing to us. It was God's way of basically saying this, look, yes, you do need to work. You need to go out and work. But after you've worked, you need to rest. And so go out and earn it. Go out and earn your rest and work first and then rest. In the New Testament, clearly we have adopted a, a different day of the week when we rest, and that is because we are honoring Jesus Christ and his resurrection. And there are people that disagree about these things. And frankly, this is probably not a big one. The bottom line is this, we should take time to reflect and remember. We should take time and take a day of rest and focus on God and not give ourselves to work and the pursuit of the, the almighty dollar and these sorts of things. A day when we stop and remember our creator and honor him and rest, meditate on him, his principles, his ways, focus on him. This is about respect for God. So we've looked at the first four of these that directly speak to our respect for God. Now we shift gears as we talk about our relationship with other people. And the first of these is that we should honor our father and our mother. And the Bible says this in uh, uh, number, excuse me, verse 12 on number five. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And so God says this, look, you should respect the people that have brought you into the world. You disrespecting history for that matter or heritage, that would be stupid. And it would cultivate abbreviated and unsatisfied lives. It wouldn't make a lot of sense, would it, to ignore all the things that people have done yesterday. In fact, you know we don't ignore those things. Every time you reach for a light switch, did you create that light switch? Did you, did you discover electricity do you understand the inventions that you use every day? Where did they come from? They came from people who built upon what other people had learned. And if you're wise, if you're smart, just basically smart, then you will show respect for history. You will show respect for heritage and you will cultivate a life of strength and where you're building upon the mistakes. Yes but also the victories of others that have come in the past or come before you. This starts with your parents, and clearly it also applies to others who have gone before us and whose inventions and whose lives and whose wisdom and whose knowledge we build upon every day. Thank God for our parents. Thank God that he gave us people who cared for us when we were small and little, couldn't take care of ourselves, didn't know how to do anything. And yet we had people who brought us up into the world and cared for us, taught us to walk, taught us to talk, taught us to think and interact with other people. We need to show respect for those people. We need to think about those people. We need to consider those people and be a blessing to those people. Number six, we should respect human life. We should respect 
all of it, every color and every age, human life. And this is what he says here, thou shalt not kill. There have been a lot of abuses of this in all of history. You think about things like slavery. You think about things like the Holocaust. You think about things like abortion. You think about things like hate and prejudice that's in the world today. All of these things are disrespectful of human life. All human life is valuable and matters to God, and it should matter to you. And so this is at, 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 at basic relationship with mankind. We should value one another, and we should respect one another. We should respect all human life. Number next, number seven, we should respect God's design in marriage. He says, thou shalt not commit adultery. And any deviation from God's design in marriage is exactly that. It's deviant. And it's a perversion of God's designs and God's wisdom. A lot of people love to talk about this these days. They want to redesign or redefine marriage. But God's the one who invented it. God's the one who made it. God's the one who designed relationships. And it's not for me to say. It's not for me to redefine. It's not for me to decide that I don't like God's principles or I don't like something that God said about marriage. We should respect God's design in marriage. Number eight. We should respect the property of others. If we want more things for ourselves, we should go work for it. Work should be encouraged in a society. You think about the kinds of laws and things that a government can bring about. My word, I hope that they'll bring about laws that would encourage work. I hope that they will bring about laws that would encourage people to be responsible. Instead of going and taking other people's things, that they would go and work for things of their own and do so legally and responsibly. This, we should have respect for the property and for the things of others. Number nine, we should respect the truth. That means we shouldn't lie and we should have integrity in our dealings. The, the, the foundation of relationships, whether you're talking husbands and wives, parents and children's uh, 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 students and their teachers, or, or governments and the people of the land, we desperately need truth. We cannot uh, make decisions without answers, without truth. And so God says, don't bear false witness, don't lie, have some respect for the truth, and have integrity in your dealings. This has to do with banking and money as well. This has to do with how we handle um, uh, what we told somebody we would do, what we said we would pay for something, and what we signed for. All of these things have to do with our integrity. And when we go back on these things, we have borne false witness. And frankly, we've disrespected God's principles and we've disrespected one another. We should respect the truth. Number 10. And lastly, we should respect God's current provision in our lives. Take our eyes off of what others own. Number 10 is really about gratitude. It's about contentment. We need to be grateful for what we have. What does he say? Thou shalt not covet. Many times it's about material things for us when we want more material things and we desire to have things that other people have. Not only as he mentioned in this passage, uh, your neighbor's ox or his donkey or his wife or his servant, anything that's your neighbor's. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5 says, be content with such things as you have. And then he talks about Jesus was speaking here and he, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you understand the point? You have Jesus. If you've received Christ as your Savior and you have a relationship with God, you have all you need. And you don't need to be wanting more. If God doesn't provide it for you, you must not need it. We used to say that about Walmart. If you can't find it at Walmart, you must not need it. The fact is this. If God hasn't provided it for you, then you don't need it. And this is ultimately, this teaches me to do what? To show respect for God in the first place. And if I need it, I'll go right back to the first commandment. And I will make sure that I speak to this one God, commandment number two, I will pray to him and I will ask for his provision in my life. And so he says, thou shalt not covet, be grateful for the things that you have. So you understand that when we're talking about these last six here, when you talk about the uh, uh, honoring of our parents and respecting life, respecting marriage, respecting uh, uh, work or the property of others, respecting the truth, and respecting gratitude or God's provision for us. In each of these, this is God's design. This is what God has made. And so ultimately, all ten commandments are about respecting God. The first four about a relationship with him directly. The last six about a relationship with men as defined by God. As defined by what he says is important. Well, 
somebody would stop at this point and say, does God have a right? <laughs> Sounds disrespectful, doesn't it? Yes, it is, frankly. Does God have a right to say what should be respected and what should not be respected? We should respect God's right to ownership of our lives. First Corinthians 6 and verse 19. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit whom you have of God and you are not your own for you are bought with a price and therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Now let's be fair if we could please. This is a verse that was written to God's people and so clearly we're talking about the blood of Jesus and the purchase of our salvation and for somebody who's not a follower of Jesus Christ, they might just stop and say that God has no God has no right over my life and God can't tell me what to do. But I would just back up and I would go back to these verses with, with you if I could. And I would say, look, understand this. God is the one who made you in the first place. I remind you, God formed you in the womb. And you not only were you not here first, there were other people here before you were and other people who were here before that. And ultimately, we all come from God and God has every right god has every right to define for me the things that he has listed in the ten commandments god has every right to decide that there are ten not eight not twelve not fifteen god has every right to decide what i should respect what i should value and then god also has every right to leave off of that list whenever he has decided to leave all of that list and so, and in, in, in ultimately, and especially as a believer in Jesus Christ, I have no right, I have no right, whether it's my body, my life, my days, my thoughts, my mind, no matter what, I have no right to take these things and to squander them and to use them as I prefer. It all belongs to him. Secondly, God calls us to be subject to the authorities that he has ordained. In Romans chapter 13, he says, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. The old King James Version says, the higher powers, for there's no authority except from God, and the authorities that, are, that exist are appointed by God. This is good for me to hear, but it's also good for government workers to hear. It's good for husbands and fathers to hear. It's good for teachers to hear it's good for anybody who is in any position of authority it's good for them to be reminded that god is the one who designed authority and whether you're talking about a policeman a governor or a president you should show respect and it's very easy to do so when the guy you voted for is the president it's when the other administrations are in that it becomes difficult and we have a tendency to mouth off to the administrations that we don't like and about them to complain about them and then at the same time to turn back around and wonder what people are saying when the administration that we prefer gets in and i'm just saying to you god says we all need to be subject to the governing authorities we all need to honor those that God has placed in authority over us. And lest you wonder, you say, well, you know what? It's 2020. It's been a long time since Paul wrote this. Yeah, right. Paul wrote this. What's it called? Romans. Romans 13. 1. Paul wrote this to the Romans in the first century. And they were getting whooped up on by, by Christian haters. They were being treated very badly. And it wouldn't be long before some of them would even lose their lives for the sake of the gospel. And Paul says to that group, hey, you know, it, uh, you need to show respect and you need to honor governing authority in your life. Unless you say, well, what if the government's corrupt? You show me a government on this earth that has not been corrupt. You show me one and certainly not first century Rome and certainly not 20th century United States. You, at no point are you going to expect to find a government that is going to be without corruption. And by the way, that's exactly why God has to tell us to honor them. Honor authority that is over you. And lastly, lastly, and just a, a, a little bit of balance on this conversation. When authorities conflict with God's instructions, we are to respect God above all. It really comes back to God, doesn't it? God's the one who designed all things. The Bible says when Peter and John were told that they should not testify about Jesus Christ, that they should not preach the word of God. Christians, this, these are good instructions for us in today's day and in that day. Peter said with the other apostles to the rulers there in Jerusalem, he said, hey guys, ultimately, what do you think we're going to do? We ought to obey God rather than men. 
We're going to do what God tells us to do, no matter what man tells us to do. We're going to obey God. This is the whole point. We're going to show respect. And God is the one who designed the conversation about respect. That means think about other people. This is about when somebody speaks to you and you respond to them. That's basic and respectful. That's not just Southern. It's rude when you don't respond to people that talk to you. It's disrespectful. It's rude when somebody gives you a gift and you don't thank them for it. It's rude when someone lets you out in traffic and you don't wave at them and show respect to the fact that somebody was kind to you. These are some basic kindnesses, maybe, but at the very least, they are respect of people who are good to us, that we in some way uh, have been good to somebody, and it's respectful for somebody to acknowledge that, to think of us and to say, I get it that you have been good to me. And so I say thank you to you. Thank you is just being respectful. Couldn't we use some more of this? Couldn't we use some more respect out on our streets, in our homes, in our churches, and in our government houses? Wouldn't it be so wonderful if people would be more respectful of God who made them and of God's principles about relationships that we have with one another, wouldn't it be a better world if we were more respectful? What are the things that stand in the way of our being respectful to God and to others? Well, at the heart of this has to be pride, doesn't it? Pride. Because many times it's prejudice that comes out of pride. It's hate that comes out of pride. It's bitterness that comes out of pride. I disrespect you because I'm frustrated the way you treated me or somebody else treated me. And I, I can't get over that. I hear a lot of people these days saying uh, uh, something like, well, I'm not bitter, but, or I'm, I'm not um, a prejudiced, but, I'm not a racist, but. I hear people say this all the time. And as they, here we are, here they are defending themselves. And I just want to stop and say, you know what? Let your actions be truth. Let your actions be truth. Just show respect to other human beings. Just show respect to God. At the heart of this, when it comes to respecting one another and each other's properties and each other's work, there's selfishness, there's materialism. There are many things that stand in the way. And I encourage you today to turn to God and to ask for cleansing. Dear God, let there be cleansing in my heart and in my life so that in our society, I will be a part of the solution, that I will respect other human beings. Whether they respect me or not, that's not the point because I respect God. And if I respect God, then I'm gonna do what he says and I'm gonna respect others as well. Can you imagine a society that would want to remove the Ten Commandments from courthouses, remove the Ten Commandments from, from uh, uh, public places. What are they afraid of? What are they afraid of? Are they afraid that, that, that somebody's uh, uh, not going to kill somebody, that someone's going to save a life? Are they afraid that someone's going to be faithful to his wife? Are they afraid that someone's going to work for something instead of stealing it? Are they afraid that someone's going to tell the truth or that someone's going to be grateful? You say, that doesn't make any sense. You're right. That's as dumb as it gets. In fact, that's certified dumb. That's what that is. You would not want to remove God's principles from our society. You would not want to remove them from your schools. You would not want to remove them from the courthouses. You would want there to be respect for God and for others. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you'll help us today. I pray that you'll help us to think of you to respect you, that we will value you and our relationship with you. And Lord, that we would think of your principles and your designs upon life and marriage and material things and properties and truth and words and the very provision that you have made for us, that we would have respect for what you have done for us, that we would value other people that we would respect them. I pray that our relationships would heal. Lord, that we would not be embittered, that we would not be bound with unforgiveness, but rather, Lord, that we would show the mercy of Christ in gazing upon the cross, that we would forgive those who have disrespected us. And Lord, may we value what you have said in your word so that there would be healing in our relationships. 
we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. If you want regular notifications of these videos and email, then you can get them if you will email faithtitusville at gmail.com and let them know that you would like to be on the list. If you want these notes specifically, you're welcome to email me directly at pastorcopic at gmail.com. Boy, I sure hope to see you this weekend at one of our worship services. With the Lord's help, we're planning a Saturday service at 6 p.m. right here at Faith Baptist Church in Titusville. Uh, also on Sunday morning, there'll be another worship service at 9 a.m. We are streaming that service and then another worship service at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. I sure hope to see you at one of these services. God bless you. Be safe.